Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com, which is the home of online learning for double bass players. So if you want to learn something new, maybe you want to revisit the fundamentals or take your playing further in any way, we're there to help you on your journey. And I'm joined today by one of our amazing bass tutors. He's somebody uh, who has done so much for the bass community over the years, uh, author, educator, uh, jazz bass player, and John Goldsby. Welcome, it's fantastic to have you here. Yeah, thanks Jeff, nice to be here. Well, I had a question for you, John, that I was hoping that you could answer. We, we've had a few questions in from the audience about the technical aspects of playing. So I thought I'd put it to you uh, in this way. What are some of the common technical problems that you see in your students and how do you address them? Well, I, I think one of the common problems that uh, younger players ha have, or even older players, is the coordination of right hand and left hand. They might not realize it, but when you play the bass, you want the right hand and left hand to work in concert. So every note has an attack, a sustain, and the next note, or attack, sustain, cut off, and the next note. Uh, it's that precision of coordinating the, the right hand and left hand is what uh, I think messes some students up. It gives them a feeling of uncertainty or bad time, or they can't really hear the pitch. The pitch doesn't jump out of the bass. So it's, a, it's a, yeah, I see. So you're not able to articulate the notes clearly, and right. then it sort of manifests itself in, in timing problems as well. Um, and do you have any kind of exercises that you would suggest, or is it just that should, people should really focus in on that area? Um, how would you work on it with a student? Well, like what I did, just did, a C major scale, um, I think a lot of people think, well, that's, that's a simple technique or a simple, yeah, thing to play, but actually it's got a string crossing right there, string crossing, shift. So when I shift from A to B, I'm holding the A out, and I might be subdividing in my head, so my time is very precise even though I'm moving slowly here. So that's one thing to practice, just make sure that your slow scales are still precisely in time. And the other thing would be to start practicing arpeggios. If you're a beginning bass player, you might just work on... So every note is even, and every note is connected every, to every other note. If you're an advanced bass player, then you might start. So that's, there's a whole, uh, yeah, area of, of problems to unpack with that, but the shifting in and out of thumb position, all, all these things still apply. The left hand, and the right hand have to be perfectly coordinated in, in order for the sound to be, first of all, in time, groovy, swinging, in tune, and for the sound to be big and pop out of the bass. Just before you sit down, yeah. let me ask you a question about your right hand technique, John, because okay. I know that people will be thinking about it today. Everyone loves to ask me about your right hand technique. Uh, it's because we filmed a video a while ago where you couldn't see your right hand. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, We're so hiding the right hand. Do you have, a, do you have a, base, a, a basic overview of your right hand technique? Is it two fingers? Is it one finger? Uh, usually for walking bass lines, I play with one finger. Yeah. Uh, I anchor my right hand on the edge of the fingerboard and I can pivot to the different strings. Uh, and I often say if you see 10 different bass players, you'll see 10 different ways of playing the right hand. Absolutely. The, the left hand is a little more of uh, cut and dry because either it's in tune or it's out of tune. With a, it's in time or out of time with the left hand. Uh, but the right hand, you'll see a lot of players play across the string. They'll pull it like this. Uh, I tend to come over the string more in a circle and strike through the string. So by doing that, I'm not deadening the string. If you pull it, it sounds great. It's a big fat sound, but for every note, there's 
there's a little dead spot. It sort of gets that Ray Brown kind of uh, thunk yeah. on, on the note, which sounds great. If that's what you, what you feel like and what you hear, that's great. Uh, I tend to come across the top of the string. every note ring to the full value and then attack the next note. It's almost like a piano hammer hitting the string, hitting the string, So there's, the string. there's no cutoffs as you're shifting. It's all right. connected and really strong and in time. John, that is fantastic advice. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to, well, to answer these questions today. So thank you so much for joining me. Of course, if you want to learn more about John Goldsby, where do we go? What, what's your website URL? JohnGoldsby.com. Sounds like a good one. <laughs> check out JohnGoldsby.com. Check out DiscoverDoubleBass.com if you want to check out some of John's uh, lessons and courses. And of course, his books, The Jazz Bass Book, and uh, well, all of the other ones are available by any reputable bookstore. So yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.